Hello mortals, I'm the booktube goddess, the number one drag queen booktuber on YouTube. I've seen quite a few top 10 fantasy series videos on booktube, so I thought that would be an interesting project, but I didn't realize how hard it is. Because here's the thing, I have a lot of fantasy series I've read where I know I like them, but I couldn't quite remember what they were about. So I needed to narrow it down. So I made a list of 50 fantasy series that I've read and remember somewhat the plot and my experience. Then to narrow it down even further, I decided my list would only include adult fantasy. So no middle grade, no young adult. And to narrow it down even further, I zeroed out any series that was incomplete. So there is no Game of Thrones or Stormlight Archive or Gentleman Bastards, although they would normally have been in my top picks of a series. But I am not including them because they are not complete stories. So all of these series that I'm going to mention, you can pick up and read from start to finish. Anyway, this was hard. I began by rating them from 1 to 100. Then I was surprised when some of what I thought should be in the top 10 weren't in the top 10. So I began adjusting the numbers and it took me forever. So I finally said, OK, enough. Let's just go for it. So I'm going to go backwards from number one to number 10, mostly because number one isn't going to be a surprise. But I think a lot of you may be surprised on what else is on my list. But first, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. What are you waiting for? Help a booktuber out. So. Coming in at number one is, of course, The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. I've talked about this ad nauseum before, but Lord of the Rings is the fantasy series that started it all and which so many modern fantasy has drawn inspiration from still. And I read it when I was a young teen and that kind of sticks with you. And I've reread it multiple times, so it holds a lot of nostalgia for me. It got me through a lot of tough times. The writing and story may come across as a little old fashioned, and some people find it dry, but for me, the story is truly magical. I always feel drawn into another universe and the characters from Frodo and Sam to Gandalf and Legolas and Gimli, they are as real to me as some of my close friends. And if you're having trouble reading Lord of the Rings, here's a little hint. You do not need to read the long uh, epic poems. When you get to a poem, you can skip it. You won't miss anything of the story. Number two also may not come as a surprise, but it is going to be The Realm of the Elderlings by Robin Hobb. Now, this is actually made up of four series linked together in the same universe of the Elderlings. Elderlings, by the way, refers to an ancient magical race in this land who are extinct, but have left behind lots of artifacts and a legacy that impacts the human civilizations in this world. The first trilogy is the Farseer trilogy, which was written in 1995 and is a solid fantasy about Fitz, the bastard son of a king raised as an apprentice assassin. And he also has magic powers, which is rare, but not unheard of in this world. But his magic also includes something called the wit, which allows him to communicate and bond with animals, which other magic users considered a tainted magic. Anyway, there are more series than this trilogy, but the story of Fitz continues in the Tawny Man trilogy, which focuses on the relationship between the fool, or the Tawny Man, who is a cipher. This is a prophetic mystic 
who you never are quite sure of their gender. And there's this platonic love story between Fitz and the Fool, unlike anything I've read before. And their story concludes in another trilogy called Fitz and the Fool, which actually brought me to tears. Now, there are two more series in this universe, The Live Ship Traders, which is really, really good. It takes place in another part of the world, but it answers a lot of questions and has a real fantastic twist on these ships that are living beings. And then there is the Rain Wild Chronicles, which I think it's the weakest of all the series in the Elderlings universe, but you find out a lot of the mysteries that rise up in other books are answered here. Anyway, the more I think about it, the more I respect this series. Number three is Kushiel's Legacy by Jacqueline Carey. Now, this puts the adult in adult fantasy. <laughs> you need to be very open to the myriad sexualities that exist to enjoy this story, especially when it comes to s and and uh, bondage and discipline. Otherwise, if that makes you uncomfortable, stay away from these books. Now that said, I wouldn't call it explicit or pornographic, maybe some softcore, but it is not a sexually explicit book in my opinion. Also, it is sort of inspired by the Christian mythos that has sort of the underlying base and occult lore. And if that turns you off, then stay away from this book. But if not, the writing is gorgeous and the storyline is really imaginative. It's about a woman named Phaedre who is born with a red moat in her eye, which means she is destined to be a courtesan who enjoys masochistic sex. <laughs> the kingdom she grows up in is called Terre d'Ange, and there's definitely a heavy French atmosphere to the setting of these books. Now, the first one is a coming-of-age novel where Phaedre awakens sexually, and she finds her place in the court, and she also discovers there is a plot against the kingdom. Number four is a series that I don't think many of you have probably heard of, but it is the Renshe series by Mickey Zucker Reichert. I'm kind of surprised that I placed it this high, but boy, do I love the storyline. Now, I'm just talking about the original trilogy. I know the author has written more in the universe, but the original trilogy includes The Last of the Renshe, The Western Wizard, and Child of Thunder. It draws heavily on Norse mythology. And the main character is called Colby, who is the greatest swordsman of a tribe of expert swordsmen. Unfortunately, most of his tribe is slain, so he is the last of the Renshe. What I really love about this series is the concept of good, evil, and neutrality, and the concept of balance, which I guess was drawn heavily from role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons. The stories, the characters, the plot, if you like action-adventure, it fires on all cylinders. Number five is another series you may not have heard of, The Troy Game by Sarah Douglas. Now, Sarah Douglas is an Australian author who unfortunately passed away relatively young in her 50s. But she wrote some of my favorite fantasy series, the Axis Trilogy, the Wayfair Redemption series, but the Troy game is my favorite. It is a four book series that is really unique. It starts in ancient Greek, in Hades' daughter, about Ariadne, a powerful sorceress who helps Theseus conquer the Minotaur. Then she is spurned by Theseus and she wants revenge, which is then taken up by her daughter. Then the Troy game 
comes into play, set up by the gods, but whoever completes it will have ultimate power. Now, what's fascinating about this series is that each book spirals up in time where all the characters are reincarnated and try to complete the Troy game, which started in the first book. And sometimes they have memories of their past lives and know what they're doing, and sometimes they don't. So in the second book, the players have moved up to medieval England, where the Troy game interacts with British mythology, the ancient gods of Britain. Then the third book, they find themselves in Renaissance England, and the final book, they are in England during World War II. I just found it so fascinating and unique. Definitely one of my favorite series. Number six is The Fiona Bar Tapestry by Guy Gavriel Kay. If you have not read Guy Gavriel Kay, his writing is... I don't even have any words. It is literary, lyrical, magical, but even as a literary writer, his stories are nicely paced. Now, sometimes literary fiction drags, but not here. It's a portal fantasy about a wizard from the magical land of Fionavar who lives in our world and works as a university professor who recruits five of his students to go to Fionavar on a quest. It draws on many fantasy themes and feels epic and mystic and also very real at the same time. So please check out Guy Gavriel K. If you've never heard of him or never read him, every book that I've read that he's written is beautiful. Number seven is the Deathgate series by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. These are the authors who started in the 80s with the Dragonlance novels and D&D framed stories. So it is heavily inspired by Dungeons and Dragons but it totally turns things on its head. It's set centuries after a war between two powerful races concluded, the Patrons and the Sartans. The Sartans won the war and imprisoned the Patrons in a labyrinth, ostensibly to rehabilitate them if they ever make their way out of the labyrinth. But to do this great magical feat, they had to sunder the realm into four realms, air, fire, water, earth. But then the Sartans mysteriously disappeared. And a patron has exited the labyrinth, a guy named Haplo. So the series explores Haplo's adventures through the sundered realms and discovering a lot of mysteries about why so many things went so very, very wrong. Even though what started the Sundering uh, had the best intentions. Number eight, I decided Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan. Now I have a lot of issues with this series, which I outlined in a separate video. In my opinion, the series is very uneven but the first three or four books are fantastic. Now, at the time when I first started reading him, I said Jordan is probably the modern day Tolkien. I had so much hope for this series, but I think it lost its way. In my opinion, I think it should have been a five or six book series, but it is a 14 book slog. And Jordan died before he finished it, and the final books were written by Brandon Sanderson, and Sanderson's writing is, of course, excellent, but it isn't quite the same as Jordan's. But I cannot deny how good this series is, in my opinion. It's a chosen one story about a reluctant hero, Rand El Thor, and his friends, Matt and Perrin, Nenev, and Egwene. If you enjoy fantasy and haven't heard of this series, then... You must be living under a rock. I think the series is worth reading, but it's a commitment. I'm not denying it. But if you want to understand what the deal is, maybe just read the first three books, which are probably the best in the series, but 
I'm warning you, if you start the series with those three books, you may be hooked into reading the entire series. Number nine is The Saga of Recluse by Ellie Modisett Jr. This is, again, maybe not a fantasy you've heard of, but if you read it, the story really gets ingrained in your head. Now, there are a ton of books in the series, like over 20, and it probably isn't finished yet, but most of them are standalone novels, even though they might reference other bits of the story. But I included it here because, like I said, it's not a continuous storyline like Wheel of Time, and you can read the first three books without reading any more, and you won't be missing anything. Now, what I like about this series is the really unique magic system. There are mages who dress in black and control the magic of order, and wizards who dress in white who wield the magic of, you guessed it, chaos. Now, there are not only limitations to magic, but actual side effects, which makes magic tricky to use in this universe. Order mages, if they use their magic too much or without realizing that they're using it, you know, sort of subconsciously, their life force gets strained. So they have to be highly trained and very orderly <laughs> in everything they do. Now, chaos wizards have very short lives because using this magic causes everything around them to be subject to a higher rate of entropy. And of course, there is a conflict between order and chaos. But it's fascinating and it's unique and it is a very good read. Finally, for number 10. I went back and forth on this a lot, but I settled on The Discworld by Terry Pratchett. Terry Pratchett is a humorist fantasy author who has written over 40 novels set in Discworld. But you just need to read two of them, The Color of Magic, the first Discworld novel, and its sequel, The Light Fantastic. And it's about an incompetent wizard named Rincewind. Who is that? Rincewind, Arch-Chancellor. Who is hired by Two Flower, an insurance salesman from a far off land who is on vacation. We may be small, but we're equal in weight to all the major land masses of this hemicircle. Well, that's because the ancient legend. <laughs> it says that it's made of gold. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not made of gold. No. And gold is just a really common metal there. You might like to keep that to ourselves. Mm -hmm. On the ass. <clears throat> Who is he? He says he's a tourist. Huh? Oh, what's that mean then? I think it means idiot. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So yes, it is as silly as it sounds, heavy in parody and satire, but underneath Pratchett's story and writing and humor, there is a depth of truth and meaning. And I'm not sure there's many authors like this. Certainly none that has done as good a job. Maybe Douglas Adams or Kurt Vonnegut. Anyway, if you haven't read Pratchett, he is an amazing writer. Now, after those first two books, if you want to read more, you really do not need to read them in any order. Just pick whatever sounds interesting. My favorites are The Weird Sisters, Mort, and The Hogfather. Okay, so this is the definitive list of the top 10 fantasy series. If anyone tells you otherwise, send them to me and I'll fight them for it. <laughs> now, like I said, I had a list of 50 fantasy series. If you want a part two to this, maybe see what I rate numbers 11 through 20. Let me know in the comments. Also, like this video if you enjoyed it. Hit that notification bell if you are subscribed to me and you want more videos by me. Until we meet again, may all the books you read 
be blessed.